Indoor Farming, The Basics of Growing Crops Indoors Indoor Farming, The Basics of Growing Crops Indoors With the world's population on the rise and available agricultural land becoming scarcer, indoor farming has become an increasingly popular solution to meeting growing food demands. Indoor farming, also known as vertical farming or indoor agriculture, is the practice of growing crops indoors under specific climate and lighting conditions without the use of traditional soil-based methods. In this article, we will explore the basics of indoor farming and how it can contribute to sustainable food production. The Benefits of Indoor Farming Indoor farming offers a range of benefits compared to traditional farming. One of the primary benefits is the ability to control the growing environment completely. With indoor farming growers can control temperature, humidity, CO2 concentration, and lighting conditions to optimize plant growth. By controlling these environmental variables, indoor farmers can also eliminate the need for pesticides and herbicides that are commonly used in conventional agriculture. Another advantage of indoor farming is the ability to grow crops year-round regardless of weather conditions outside. This means that indoor farmers can produce crops even during the winter months when traditional farms are inactive. Furthermore, indoor farming doesn't require large amounts of land for cultivation, making it an ideal option for urban areas and other locations where arable land is scarce. Indoor farming is also incredibly water efficient. Traditional farming methods use massive amounts of water to irrigate crops, which can lead to water shortages in some regions. In contrast, indoor farming systems use up to 90% less water than conventional agriculture, making it an environmentally sustainable solution for food production. The Basics of Indoor Farming now that we've explored the benefits of indoor farming let's delve into the basics of growing crops indoors. Indoor farming requires three essential components, lighting, nutrients, and a growth medium. Lighting is an essential factor in the photosynthesis process, and it's vital for plant growth. However, indoor environments typically lack adequate natural light requiring growers to provide artificial lighting. LED lights are a popular choice for indoor farmers because they emit specific wavelengths that are ideal for plant growth. Red and blue lights are essential as they result in better plant growth and development, while green lights are unnecessary as plants reflect them. Nutrients are also key for plant growth and development. Indoor farm systems typically use hydroponics, a method of growing plants in a water-based nutrient solution instead of soil. Hydroponics is a highly efficient and sustainable method of farming, as it can save up to 90% of water compared to traditional farming methods. Indoor farmers use different types of nutrient solutions depending on the type of plant that they're growing. There are two main types of nutrient solutions, synthetic and organic. The choice of nutrient solution will depend on the environmental conditions, the plants, and the grower's preferences. Lastly, the growth medium is the substance in which the plants grow and anchor their roots. Hydroponic systems use different types of growth mediums such as rock wool, cocoa coir, perlite, and vermiculite. The growth medium can affect the cultivation process, so choosing the right type of medium is crucial to achieving optimal results. Choosing the right indoor farming system 
Indoor farming systems come in different types and choosing the right system will depend on several factors, such as the space available, the type of crop, and the grower's level of experience. Here are some of the most common indoor growing systems. Hydroponic systems Hydroponic systems are the most popular indoor farming systems, and they use water as the primary medium for plant growth. Hydroponic systems can be categorized into two types, NFT, nutrient film technique, and DWC, deep water culture. NFT systems use channels that run along the plant's roots and allow a small amount of water mix with nutrients to flow over the roots constantly. The roots absorb the nutrients and water directly through the film. DWC systems are slightly different. Plants float on a hydroponic raft on top of the nutrient solution, and the roots dangle into the water, absorbing nutrients. The entire system is suspended in air, which provides optimal aeration to the plants. Aeroponic systems Aeroponic systems use mist or a fine spray to deliver nutrients to the roots. The growth medium for these systems is a closed container that surrounds the roots like net cups or foam pads. Aeroponic systems deliver nutrients more efficiently than hydroponic systems because the plants directly absorb the nutrients from the mist. Vertical farming systems Vertical farming systems use stacked shelves to grow plants. These systems are particularly suited for small apartments or rooms where space is limited. Vertical farming is an ideal option for growing leafy greens, herbs, and some smaller vegetables such as cherry tomatoes. The Benefits of Indoor Farming Indoor farming offers a range of benefits compared to traditional farming. One of the primary benefits is the ability to control the growing environment completely. With indoor farming, growers can control temperature, humidity, CO2 concentration, and lighting conditions to optimize plant growth. By controlling these environmental variables, indoor farmers can also eliminate the need for pesticides and herbicides that are commonly used in conventional agriculture. Another advantage of indoor farming is the ability to grow crops year-round regardless of weather conditions outside. This means that indoor farmers can produce crops even during the winter months when traditional farms are inactive. Furthermore, indoor farming doesn't require large amounts of land for cultivation, making it an ideal option for urban areas and other locations where arable land is scarce. Microgreens, the ultimate nutritious and delicious crop. Microgreens, the ultimate nutritious and delicious crop. Microgreens are quickly gaining popularity in the world of food, and for a good reason. These delicate little plants, often harvested at just a few weeks old, are packed with nutrients and flavor. They have become a staple in high-end restaurants, but are now making their way into home kitchens as well. If you're looking to add something special to your diet, microgreens might just be the answer. What are microgreens? Microgreens are young, edible plants that are harvested when they have grown their first true leaves. They are typically around 1 to 3 inches tall and come in a variety of colors and flavors. They are often confused with sprouts, but the difference is that microgreens are grown in soil, while sprouts are grown in water. Microgreens can be grown from a wide variety of seeds, including vegetables, herbs, 
and even some edible flowers. Some of the most popular varieties include sunflower, kale, radish, pea, and beet. They are relatively easy to grow and can be grown indoors or outdoors in a variety of containers. Nutritional Benefits of Microgreens One of the most significant benefits of microgreens is their nutritional content. They are an excellent source of vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. In fact, some studies have found that they can contain up to 40 times more nutrients than their mature counterparts. For example, red cabbage microgreens have been found to have six times more vitamin C than mature red cabbage. Microgreens are also an excellent source of fiber, which can help to promote healthy digestion. They have been found to contain high levels of chlorophyll, which has been shown to have anti-inflammatory properties. Some varieties of microgreens, such as broccoli and radish, have been found to contain high levels of sulforaphane, which is a compound that has been shown to have anti-cancer properties. Growing Microgreens Growing microgreens is relatively easy, making them an excellent choice for home gardeners. They can be grown indoors or outdoors, depending on your climate and space. To get started, you will need some seeds, soil, and a container. One of the most popular ways to grow microgreens is in a tray or container. You can use any container that is at least 2 inches deep, such as a plastic deli container, an aluminum tray, or a ceramic dish. Fill the container with a moist growing medium, such as potting soil, and scatter the seeds evenly on top. Cover the seeds with another layer of soil and mist with water to keep the soil moist. Place the container in a warm, sunny area and keep the soil moist. Within a few days, you should start to see the seeds sprout. Once the microgreens have grown their first true leaves, you can harvest them. Harvesting Microgreens Microgreens are typically ready to harvest when they have grown their first true leaves. Depending on the variety, this can take anywhere from 1 to 3 weeks. To harvest, use scissors or a sharp knife to cut the microgreens just above the soil line. Rinse them under cold water and pat them dry with a paper towel. They can be eaten immediately or stored in an airtight container in the refrigerator for up to a week. Using microgreens in recipes Microgreens can be used in a variety of recipes to add flavor, texture, and nutrition. They are often used as a garnish or topping for salads, sandwiches, and soups. Here are a few recipe ideas to get you started. Avocado toast with microgreens, spread mashed avocado on whole grain toast, and top with microgreens, cherry tomatoes, and a sprinkle of sea salt. Microgreen and goat cheese omelet, whisk together eggs, salt, and pepper. Cook in a non-stick skillet until set. Top with crumbled goat cheese and microgreens. Microgreen and radish salad, toss microgreens with sliced radish, sliced cucumber, and a citrus vinaigrette. Microgreen pesto, blend microgreens garlic, pine nuts, parmesan cheese, and olive oil in a food processor until smooth. Serve with pasta or as a dip. Caring for your microgreens To keep your microgreens healthy and growing strong, 
there are a few things to keep in mind. First, make sure that they are getting enough light. Microgreens need at least 4 hours of direct sunlight each day, so consider placing them near a window or under a grow light. Second, make sure that the soil is kept moist at all times. This means watering them regularly, but not too much so as not to cause waterlogging. Remember, the goal is to keep the soil consistently moist, not wet. Third, make sure that you are using a quality potting mix that is rich in nutrients and free of contaminants. You can find many brands of potting soil online or at your local garden center. Finally, be sure to monitor your microgreens for pests or diseases. Common pests that can attack microgreens include aphids, spider mites, and thrips. Beekeeping for Beginners, Starting Your Own Apiary Beekeeping for Beginners, Starting Your Own Apiary Beekeeping, also known as apiculture, is the practice of keeping bees for the purpose of producing honey, beeswax, and other bee-related products. Not only is it a popular hobby, but it is also an important agricultural industry, serving as a crucial pollination service for crops. For those interested in beekeeping, starting your own apiary might seem daunting, but it can be a rewarding and educational experience. Here is a beginner's guide to starting your own apiary. Start with education. Before diving into beekeeping, it is important to educate yourself on the subject. Researching and reading about beekeeping is essential to understanding the behavior of bees, necessary equipment, and the proper care required for the health of your bees. You can start by reading books, watching videos, attending workshops, or even joining local beekeeping associations. You can also consult with established beekeepers in your area to learn about their experiences and advice. Location Once you have a basic understanding of beekeeping, it is important to choose a suitable location for your apiary. Bees need to have access to a wide variety of flowering plants for food and water sources. It is recommended to place your apiary in an area with plenty of nearby flowers and plants. In addition, you should look for a location with some level of shelter from extreme weather conditions, such as wind and rain. Beehives should not be placed in areas with heavy foot traffic or near pets or livestock, to avoid the risk of disturbances or harm to your bees. Equipment you will need some basic equipment to get started with beekeeping. The most essential items include Beehives, the primary housing for your bees. There are various types of beehives available, such as the Langstroth hive and the top bar hive. Bee suits, protective gear worn by beekeepers to prevent stings. Full body coverage is recommended, including a hat, veil, and gloves. Smoker, a tool used by beekeepers to calm bees during hive inspections. Beekeeping tools, there are various specialized tools used for beekeeping, such as a hive tool for opening the hive, a bee brush for gently moving bees, and a feeder for providing sugar syrup. Obtain your bees. Once you have your equipment, the next step is obtaining bees. There are two main options for acquiring bees, buying a package of bees or purchasing a nuke, nucleus colony. 
A package of bees refers to a shipment of bees in a screened box along with a queen and a small supply of food. A nuke, on the other hand, is a small colony consisting of bees, a queen, and a well-established comb. Nukes are generally considered a more stable option since they come with established comb and brood. It is important to choose a reputable source for your bees, as the health and genetics of your bees can greatly affect the success of your apiary. It is recommended to purchase bees from established beekeepers or reputable suppliers. Hive Management Hive management is an ongoing process that involves regular inspections to ensure that the bees are healthy and that the hive is thriving. During hive inspections, you will be looking for signs of disease or pests, monitoring the brood, and checking how much honey the bees have produced. It is important to keep records of your hive inspections to help you track the health and productivity of your bees. This can include noting the date of the inspection, weather conditions, and any observations of the hive, such as queen status, presence of larvae, and honey stores. Harvesting Honey The primary benefit of beekeeping is the production of honey. Honey harvesting involves removing honeycombs from the hive and extracting the honey. It is important to wait until the honeycombs are filled with mature honey before harvesting, typically mid to late summer. It is recommended to leave enough honey in the hive for the bees to sustain themselves throughout the winter. The honey extraction process involves removing the honey-filled comb from the hive, uncapping the wax seals on each cell, and spinning the frames in a honey extractor to remove the honey. The honey can be filtered and bottled for consumption or sale. Final Thoughts Beekeeping can be a rewarding and beneficial hobby, providing honey for personal use or even a business venture. However, it requires dedication and a willingness to continue learning about the behavior and care of bees. Remember to always prioritize the health and safety of your bees, and seek guidance from established beekeepers or resources before making any decisions or changes to your apiary. With the right knowledge and equipment, beekeeping can be a fulfilling and educational experience. As you start your beekeeping journey, it is important to remember that bees are living creatures that require attention and care. This means investing time and resources in providing them with a suitable environment, monitoring their health regularly, and ensuring they have enough food and water sources. Additionally, it is important to keep in mind that beekeeping comes with risks such as bee stings, allergic reactions, and potential legal issues related to beekeeping regulations in your area. Understanding and addressing these risks through proper protective gear, safety protocols, and legal compliance is crucial for a successful and safe beekeeping experience. Finally, beekeeping can be a great way to connect with nature, learn about sustainability, and contribute to the health of our environment. By taking care of your bees and their surrounding ecosystem, you are playing a critical role in supporting biodiversity and combating the decline of pollinators worldwide. Moreover, beekeeping can also serve as a form of therapy and stress relief. Spending time with bees and working with them can help reduce stress levels and promote relaxation. It can also be a great way to unwind and disconnect from the hectic demands of daily life. Home Gardening 101 – Understanding Soil and Fertilizer Home Gardening 101 – Understanding Soil and Fertilizer 
Gardening is a wonderful hobby that can bring many benefits to your home. It allows you to grow fresh produce, beautify your surroundings, and even reduce stress. However, it can be challenging to get started, especially if you're unfamiliar with the basics of soil and fertilizer. This article will provide you with a comprehensive guide to understanding soil and fertilizer in home gardening. Soil, the foundation of your garden. Soil is the foundation of your garden, providing support, water, and nutrients to your plants. Understanding the basics of soil is essential to successful gardening. Soil is made up of four essential components, mineral matter, organic matter, water, and air. Mineral matter is the inorganic components of the soil, such as sand, silt, and clay. Organic matter is the decomposed remains of plants and animals that provide nutrients to your plants. Water and air are also essential components of the soil that help keep your plants healthy. Soil Types There are three main types of soil, sandy, loamy, and clay. Sandy soil is composed primarily of sand and has a low water holding capacity. Loamy soil is a mixture of sand, silt, and clay and is considered the ideal soil for plants. Clay soil is made up primarily of clay and has a high water holding capacity but can be difficult to work with due to its heaviness. Soil Testing Before starting your garden, it is important to test your soil to determine its quality. You can purchase a soil testing kit from your local gardening store or use a soil testing service. Soil testing will help you determine the pH level, nutrient content, and organic matter in your soil. pH level The pH level is a measure of how acidic or alkaline your soil is and can affect the growth of your plants. The pH scale ranges from 0 to 14 with 7 being neutral. Soil with a pH level below 7 is considered acidic, and soil with a pH level above 7 is considered alkaline. Most plants prefer a pH level between 6 and 7.5. If your soil's pH level is too acidic, you can add lime to raise it. If it is too alkaline, you can add sulfur to lower it. Nutrient Content The nutrient content in your soil is also essential to the growth of your plants. Soil testing can help you determine the levels of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium in your soil. These three nutrients are essential to plant growth and are often referred to as NPK. If your soil is deficient in any of these nutrients, you can add organic or chemical fertilizers to improve it. Organic Matter The organic matter in your soil is essential to providing nutrients to your plants. Organic matter can come from a variety of sources, including compost, manure, and decaying plant material. Adding organic matter to your soil can improve its structure, water holding capacity, and nutrient content. Fertilizer, boosting your soil. Fertilizer is a great way to boost your soil's nutrient content and promote healthy plant growth. There are two main types of fertilizer, organic and chemical. Organic fertilizer. Organic fertilizers are made from natural materials like compost, manure, and bone meal. They are slow-release fertilizers and provide nutrients to your plants over time. Organic fertilizers are more environmentally friendly than chemical fertilizers and improve the overall health of your soil. Chemical Fertilizer Chemical fertilizers are made up of synthetic materials and provide nutrients to your plants quickly. They are typically less expensive than organic fertilizers and can be purchased at most gardening stores. 
However, chemical fertilizers can damage your soil structure and harm beneficial soil organisms like earthworms. Applying Fertilizer When applying fertilizer, it is important to follow the instructions carefully. Over-fertilizing can harm your plants and damage your soil. It is also essential to apply fertilizer evenly throughout your garden to ensure that all of your plants receive adequate nutrients. Organic Fertilizer Alternatives If you prefer not to use chemical fertilizers, there are many organic alternatives. Compost, for example, is an excellent source of nutrients and can be made from organic waste in your home. Other organic fertilizers include bone meal, fish meal, and blood meal. In addition to the basics of soil and fertilizer, there are other factors to consider when starting a home garden. One of the most important factors is choosing the right plants for your growing conditions. Different plants have different requirements for sunlight, water, and soil, so it's important to choose plants that will thrive in your particular environment. Creating a Bountiful Vegetable Garden on Your Balcony Creating a Bountiful Vegetable Garden on Your Balcony Gardening is a popular and rewarding hobby for many people, but not everyone has access to a large outdoor space for planting. Luckily, it is still possible to grow your own vegetables even if you live in an apartment or have a small balcony. With a little bit of creativity and planning, you can turn your balcony into a bountiful vegetable garden. Choose the right containers. The first step in creating a balcony vegetable garden is choosing the right containers. You can use just about anything that can hold soil and has drainage holes. Some popular options include large pots, hanging baskets, window boxes, and even buckets or old shoes. Whatever you choose, make sure it's big enough to accommodate the size of the plant you want to grow. It's also important to consider the material of your containers. Terracotta pots are popular because they are very porous and allow water to evaporate quickly. This can be good for plants like herbs that don't like to be too wet. However, if you live in a hot, dry climate, you may want to choose a less porous material that will retain moisture longer, such as plastic or glazed ceramic. Consider growing vertical. If your balcony doesn't have a lot of floor space, consider growing your vegetables vertically. This can be done by using trellises, hanging planters, or stackable containers. Tomatoes, cucumbers, and beans are all great options for vertical gardening. Just make sure you choose a container that is sturdy enough to hold the weight of the plant as it grows. You may also need to provide additional support, such as tying the vine to the trellis or placing a stake in the container. Choose the right plants. When choosing which vegetables to grow in your balcony garden, it's important to consider your balcony's microclimate. This includes factors such as how much sunlight your balcony gets, how much wind it gets, and how hot or cold it gets. If your balcony gets a lot of sun, you may want to consider growing heat-loving plants such as tomatoes, peppers, and eggplant. If your balcony is in a windy area, you may want to choose more sturdy plants such as beans or peas. And if your balcony doesn't get a lot of sun, you can still grow leafy greens such as lettuce or spinach. It's also important to consider the size of the plants you choose. Some plants, such as zucchini or watermelon, 
can take up a lot of space and may not be practical for a small balcony garden. On the other hand, plants such as herbs or greens can be grown in smaller containers and can provide a lot of yield in a small space. Provide adequate drainage One of the biggest challenges of growing vegetables in containers is providing adequate drainage. Vegetables that sit in water for too long can develop root rot and other diseases. To prevent this, make sure your containers have drainage holes in the bottom and that the soil is well draining. You can also add a layer of rocks, gravel, or other coarse material to the bottom of your containers. This will allow the water to drain away from the roots of the plant. Fertilize regularly. Since container gardening can be more challenging than traditional gardening, it's important to make sure your plants have access to the nutrients they need. This means fertilizing regularly. You can choose from a variety of fertilizers, including organic options such as vermicompost or synthetic options such as slow-release fertilizers. Just make sure you don't over-fertilize, as this can be harmful to your plants. Follow the instructions on the fertilizer package and adjust as needed based on the size and growth rate of your plants. Water regularly Watering is another important aspect of container gardening. Vegetables in containers can dry out more quickly than those in the ground, so it's important to keep the soil moist. However, you don't want to overwater, as this can drown your plants. The amount of water your plants need will depend on a variety of factors, including the size of the container and the type of plant. A good rule of thumb is to water when the top inch of soil feels dry to the touch. Water slowly and deeply to ensure the water reaches the roots of the plant. You may also want to consider using a self-watering container, which can help regulate the moisture level of the soil. Pest Control Just like in a traditional garden, pests can be a problem in a balcony vegetable garden. Common pests include aphids, white flies, and spider mites. You can try using natural repellents such as garlic and soap sprays, or you can use pesticides if necessary. It's also important to keep an eye out for any signs of disease in your plants. Remove any infected leaves or branches and dispose of them properly to prevent the spread of disease to other plants. Harvesting your vegetables One of the best things about having a balcony vegetable garden is being able to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Most vegetables will be ready to harvest when they are fully ripe. Some, such as tomatoes, can be harvested when they are still slightly green and will ripen off the vine. Be sure to harvest your vegetables regularly to encourage more growth. Indoor Farming – The Basics of Growing Crops Indoors Indoor Farming – The Basics of Growing Crops Indoors with the world's population on the rise and available agricultural land becoming scarcer, indoor farming has become an increasingly popular solution to meeting growing food demands. Indoor farming, also known as vertical farming or indoor agriculture, is the practice of growing crops indoors under specific climate and lighting conditions without the use of traditional soil-based methods. In this article, we will explore the basics of indoor farming and how it can contribute to sustainable food production. 
The Benefits of Indoor Farming Indoor farming offers a range of benefits compared to traditional farming. One of the primary benefits is the ability to control the growing environment completely. With indoor farming growers can control temperature, humidity, CO2 concentration, and lighting conditions to optimize plant growth. By controlling these environmental variables, indoor farmers can also eliminate the need for pesticides and herbicides that are commonly used in conventional agriculture. Another advantage of indoor farming is the ability to grow crops year-round regardless of weather conditions outside. This means that indoor farmers can produce crops even during the winter months when traditional farms are inactive. Furthermore, indoor farming doesn't require large amounts of land for cultivation, making it an ideal option for urban areas and other locations where arable land is scarce. Indoor farming is also incredibly water efficient. Traditional farming methods use massive amounts of water to irrigate crops, which can lead to water shortages in some regions. In contrast, indoor farming systems use up to 90% less water than conventional agriculture, making it an environmentally sustainable solution for food production. The Basics of Indoor Farming Now that we've explored the benefits of indoor farming let's delve into the basics of growing crops indoors. Indoor farming requires three essential components, lighting, nutrients, and a growth medium. Lighting is an essential factor in the photosynthesis process, and it's vital for plant growth. However, indoor environments typically lack adequate natural light, requiring growers to provide artificial lighting. LED lights are a popular choice for indoor farmers because they emit specific wavelengths that are ideal for plant growth. Red and blue lights are essential as they result in better plant growth and development, while green lights are unnecessary as plants reflect them. Nutrients are also key for plant growth and development. Indoor farm systems typically use hydroponics, a method of growing plants in a water-based nutrient solution instead of soil. Hydroponics is a highly efficient and sustainable method of farming, as it can save up to 90% of water compared to traditional farming methods. Indoor farmers use different types of nutrient solutions depending on the type of plant that they're growing. There are two main types of nutrient solutions, synthetic and organic. The choice of nutrient solution will depend on the environmental conditions, the plants, and the grower's preferences. Lastly, the growth medium is the substance in which the plants grow and anchor their roots. Hydroponic systems use different types of growth mediums such as rock wool, cocoa coir, perlite, and vermiculite. The growth medium can affect the cultivation process, so choosing the right type of medium is crucial to achieving optimal results. Choosing the right indoor farming system Indoor farming systems come in different types and choosing the right system will depend on several factors, such as the space available, the type of crop, and the grower's level of experience. Here are some of the most common indoor growing systems. Hydroponic systems Hydroponic systems are the most popular indoor farming systems, and they use water as the primary medium for plant growth. Hydroponic systems can be categorized into two types, NFT, nutrient film technique, and DWC, deep water culture. NFT systems use channels that run along the plant's roots and allow a small amount of water mixed with nutrients to flow over the roots constantly. 
The roots absorb the nutrients and water directly through the film. DWC systems are slightly different. Plants float on a hydroponic raft on top of the nutrient solution, and the roots dangle into the water, absorbing nutrients. The entire system is suspended in air, which provides optimal aeration to the plants. Aeroponic systems Aeroponic systems use mist or a fine spray to deliver nutrients to the roots. The growth medium for these systems is a closed container that surrounds the roots like net cups or foam pads. Aeroponic systems deliver nutrients more efficiently than hydroponic systems because the plants directly absorb the nutrients from the mist. Vertical farming systems Vertical farming systems use stacked shelves to grow plants. These systems are particularly suited for small apartments or rooms where space is limited. Vertical farming is an ideal option for growing leafy greens, herbs, and some smaller vegetables such as cherry tomatoes. The Benefits of Indoor Farming Indoor farming offers a range of benefits compared to traditional farming. One of the primary benefits is the ability to control the growing environment completely. With indoor farming, growers can control temperature, humidity, CO2 concentration, and lighting conditions to optimize plant growth. By controlling these environmental variables, indoor farmers can also eliminate the need for pesticides and herbicides that are commonly used in conventional agriculture. Another advantage of indoor farming is the ability to grow crops year-round regardless of weather conditions outside. This means that indoor farmers can produce crops even during the winter months when traditional farms are inactive. Furthermore, indoor farming doesn't require large amounts of land for cultivation, making it an ideal option for urban areas and other locations where arable land is scarce. Hydroponic farming made easy at home. Hydroponic farming made easy at home. If you are interested in growing your own vegetables, fruits, and herbs, but lack space or the right type of soil for traditional gardening, then hydroponic farming might be the solution for you. Hydroponic farming is a method of growing plants without soil, instead using nutrient-rich solutions to deliver the required nutrients to the roots. With a bit of knowledge and some basic equipment, you can set up your own hydroponic garden right in your home. What is hydroponic farming? Hydroponic farming is a technique of growing plants in a nutrient-rich solution instead of soil. The plant roots are directly submerged in the solution and nutrients, water, and oxygen are delivered directly to the roots. This method is particularly useful in places where traditional soil-based gardening is not possible, such as in urban environments, on rooftops, or in homes where outdoor space is limited. Hydroponic farming is also known for producing higher yields of crops and using less water than traditional gardening. Types of Hydroponic Systems There are several different types of hydroponic systems, each with its own strengths and weaknesses. Here are a few of the most popular ones. 1. Deep Water Culture System The plants are suspended in a nutrient-rich solution, and the roots are submerged in the water. An air pump is used to provide oxygen to the roots. 2. Drip System A nutrient solution is dripped onto the plant's roots, which are held in place by a growing medium. 3. Aeroponic system, plants are held in a chamber with their roots suspended in the air. A nutrient-rich mist is sprayed onto the roots. 
4. Nutrient film technique, plants are placed in long channels, and a thin film of nutrient-rich solution is circulated over the roots. Choosing the right plants for hydroponic farming Not all plants are suitable for hydroponic farming. Some crops grow better in soil, while others thrive in hydroponic systems. Here are a few examples of plants that grow well in hydroponic systems. 1. Lettuce. Lettuce is one of the easiest plants to grow hydroponically. It grows quickly, and you can grow several varieties. 2. Tomatoes. Tomatoes grow well in hydroponic systems, and you can expect high yields of delicious fruit. 3. Herbs, basil, parsley, cilantro, and other herbs can be grown hydroponically and will provide flavorful additions to your meals. 4. Strawberries. Strawberries can be grown in towers or vertical hydroponic systems, and they produce delicious fruit throughout the season. Setting up a hydroponic system at home. Now that you understand the basics of hydroponic farming, it's time to set up your own system. Here are the basic steps to follow. Step 1. Choose a system. Decide on a hydroponic system that works best for your needs and space available. Deep water culture, drip, aeroponic or nutrient film technique. Step 2. Choose a grow medium. The plants should be held in place by a growing medium, such as vermiculite, cocoa coir or rock wool. Step 3. Choose nutrients. Nutrient-rich solutions are a key component of hydroponic systems. You can either buy pre-made nutrient solutions or make your own. Step 4. Choose lighting. Plants require light to grow, and you may need to supplement natural light with grow lights if you are growing indoors. Step 5. Choose plants. Choose plants that grow well in hydroponic systems and are suited for the conditions in your home. Step 6. Set up the system. Assemble your hydroponic system according to the manufacturer's instructions, and fill it with nutrient-rich solution. Step 7. Monitor and maintain the system. Check the nutrient solution levels daily and adjust as needed. Also, watch for pests and diseases. Benefits of Hydroponic Farming Hydroponic farming offers several benefits over traditional soil-based gardening. Here are a few of the most notable advantages. 1. More efficient use of space. Hydroponic systems can produce higher yields than soil-based gardening and can be set up in smaller spaces. 2. Year-round growing. Hydroponic systems can be set up indoors, which allows for year-round growing, even in cold climates. 3. Less water usage. Hydroponic systems use less water than traditional gardening, making them more environmentally friendly. 4. Higher plant growth rate. Plants grown hydroponically typically grow faster and produce higher yields than soil-based plants. 5. The Role of Women in Tropical Agriculture The role of women in tropical agriculture is of significant importance. Not only do women play a pivotal role in ensuring that food is available for the world's population, but they also are key actors in maintaining biodiversity, managing natural resources, and improving rural livelihoods. This article will explore the importance of women in tropical agriculture and how they can overcome the challenges that they face to participate fully in the agro-food system. The Contribution of Women in Tropical Agriculture Women are responsible for producing, processing, and marketing food in many parts of the world. 
According to the United Nations, women produce 60 to 80 percent of food in many developing countries. In Sub-Saharan Africa, women make up approximately 75 percent of the agricultural workforce, and yet they earn only 10 percent of agricultural income. In Asia, women account for over 50 percent of agricultural workers. Women's contribution to tropical agriculture is undeniable. Women are also necessary for the preservation of biodiversity in tropical agriculture. They often have an intimate knowledge of local plant species, both wild and cultivated, and play a critical role in their management and conservation. Many women farmers grow crops that are vital to maintaining genetic diversity in tropical agriculture. This role is essential as loss of biodiversity in agriculture has consequences for genetic resources and crop production. Women are essential in sustainable management and conservation of natural resources. They are responsible for managing natural resources such as water, forests, and land, which are fundamental for the success of agricultural production. Women have extensive knowledge of the environment, having spent years growing and collecting food in rural landscapes. They have learned to manage and protect the environment in ways that ensure its long-term productivity. Their expertise is invaluable in the development of sustainable agricultural practices. The Impact of Gender-Related Factors on Women's Participation in Tropical Agriculture Despite the importance of women in tropical agriculture, gender-related factors affect their ability to participate fully in the agri-food system. Women often face discrimination and exploitation in agriculture. This is due to many factors such as sociocultural norms, land tenure systems, lack of access to credit, markets, and technology, among others. One of the critical issues that affect women in agriculture is land tenure. They often have limited access to land, which limits their productivity and income. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, only 20% of landholders worldwide are women. In many instances, women have restricted access to land due to societal norms that view women's roles as limited to the home. In some countries, laws assign ownership of land to men only, making it difficult for women to own land in their own right. Another challenge is access to credit and finance. Women often lack access to finance, which could help them increase their productivity and improve their livelihoods. In many cases, women are not considered as creditworthy as men, and financial institutions are hesitant to lend them money. This lack of access to credit limits women's ability to invest in their farm's productivity. Education is also a vital factor in women's participation in agriculture. Women often have less education than men, limiting their ability to obtain higher-paying jobs and access to new technologies and farming methods. Low levels of education can also limit women's access to information, making it challenging to learn about new farming techniques that could increase productivity. Addressing the Barriers to Women's Participation in Tropical Agriculture Efforts to promote gender equality in tropical agriculture must start with addressing the barriers to women's participation. The following are some strategies that could help women overcome some of the challenges that they face. Improving land tenure, governments should work to remove discriminatory policies against women that limit their ability to own land. Policies should provide women with access to land ownership, facilitating their ability to invest in their farm's productivity. Access to credit and finance, providing women with access to credit and financial services would help them invest in their farms to increase productivity. Governments should establish programs that target women to increase their financial inclusion, such as microfinance programs targeted to women. Education and skills training 
governments and other organizations should invest in education and skills training for women farmers in tropical agriculture. Education and skills training would help women overcome gender barriers, widening their access to information and new farming methods. Promoting gender equality in tropical agriculture is not only a matter of social justice, it is also a strategic move to achieve sustainable development. Women's empowerment in agriculture can influence positive social, environmental, and economic impacts. It has been proven that when women are empowered in agriculture, there is an increase in farm yield, improvement of rural livelihoods, and conservation of natural resources, among others. It is not just about providing women with equal access to resources and opportunities, gender responsive. That Policies must also involve recognizing and valuing women's knowledge and expertise in agriculture. Local communities, governments, and international organizations must acknowledge the importance of women's role in agriculture and ensure that their voices are heard and represented. In addition, gender-responsive policies in tropical agriculture must also recognize and address intersecting forms of discrimination based on race, ethnicity, class, and other factors. Women from marginalized and vulnerable groups face additional barriers to their participation in agriculture and must be given extra support. Moreover, it is essential to recognize that women's participation in agriculture goes beyond their role as farmers. Women are also key players in other aspects of the agri-food system, including food processing, marketing, and distribution. In many developing countries, Women are responsible for processing and preserving food, adding value to raw agricultural products, and bringing them to market. However, gender-related barriers persist in these areas as well. Women often lack access to modern technologies and equipment for processing and preserving food, limiting their ability to add value to their products and obtain better prices. Women may also face discrimination in accessing markets and selling their products, leading to lower prices and less income. Governments and other stakeholders must work to ensure that women have equal access to these critical aspects of the agro-food system. This involves providing women with access to modern technologies, training, and knowledge sharing that can help them add value to their products and access markets on equal terms. Finally, it is essential to recognize that promoting gender equality in agriculture is not just about empowering women.